Hi there, good morning. That's where I'm staying. Skyroof Hotel. Nice hotel. However, not the location that I was hoping for. One of the most important uh, qualities of a hotel is where it's located. Generally, you want to be in the uh, city center so you can just walk out and go see the sights easily. When I booked a hotel there, then the score for the location was uh, high, and so I thought that it was going to be in the center. It is not. It is like a uh, two and a half kilometer walk to some of the uh, main places to see in the uh, center of the city. I'm up for a walk, so no big deal. Today is September 12th. It is currently 82 degrees Fahrenheit. That is 28 Celsius. And this is Nicosia, Cyprus. I just arrived last night. A direct flight from Kayseri, Turkey. Kayseri is the closest airport to Cappadocia, where I was for the past eight days. And so basically it was kind of a uh, layover flight because I'm headed back to Greece. It is mid-September. My seven and a half month trip so far this time is coming to a close. I started this trip in uh, the end of January and I'm headed back to the U.S. sometime soon. I haven't booked a flight yet, but uh, this is the perfect time for Greece. I wanted to end uh, this big uh, journey with some relaxing time on the Greek islands. Probably won't really feel much there. And so I was looking for the possibility of flights to Athens and surprisingly they weren't great out of Turkey. I was going to have to do a layover in Istanbul and they weren't cheap. But there was a very cheap direct flight from Kayseri here to Cyprus. I've never been to the uh, northern Turkish side of Cyprus. And then there are very cheap direct flights from the Greek side of Cyprus, from Larnaca to Athens. And so I have a flight booked from Larnaca to Athens in three days. I'm here again in uh, Nicosia on the Turkish side for one more night, just tonight. And then I will cross the border over into the Greek side of Cyprus. So Nicosia has the distinction of being the only divided capital city in the world. There is a border that cuts right through the city and it is a hard border. It is not a soft border. For example, Ireland, the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, I was there last year. I drove from one part of uh, the Republic of Ireland to another part of the Republic of Ireland in the north. In the process, I passed through Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom, of course, and I never noticed except for the signs, the uh, mileage signs change from kilometers to miles because they used the miles in uh, the United Kingdom. That was it. There was no sign saying welcome to Northern Ireland. There was no border checkpoint, nothing. So that is a soft border. This here is a very, very hard border because you are in a sense passing from Asia into Europe. It's kind of a gray area because Cyprus is part of the EU, the European Union, and the Schengen zone of countries in Europe, mostly Western Europe, in which there are no borders, border controls between the countries. France and Germany and Netherlands and Spain and Portugal and Italy and Greece that make up the uh, Schengen area and as a traveler then you're allowed 90 days in that Schengen area and so the border is dividing a city dividing a country that 
in international terms is considered one country, but people from the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus here, as it is called, recognized as an independent country by only one other country, and that is Turkey. And so the language here is Turkish. And so to the best of my understanding then, citizens of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus cannot easily cross that border into Greek Cyprus. And the same with Greek Cypriots into Turkey. However, I can. So it's a very uh, odd situation. And the reason for it, in a nutshell, it is complicated, but basically in 1974, Turkey invaded Cyprus. This area was 80% Greek-speaking people at that time, 20% Turkish. And then because of various political events, a coup d'etat within Cyprus and shifting of the political landscape, Turkey decided to take advantage of that opening and invaded and only got about a third the way in. And so basically one third of the island of Cyprus is now populated primarily by Turkish-speaking people. They use the Turkish lira here. And the other two-thirds is primarily Greek-speaking. And they use the euro currency. So that is the uh, general situation. All right, I'm going to uh, keep on walking. And figure out what's going on, what it's like here in Nicosia. There don't seem to be like a whole lot of tourist sites, but I'm walking to the Kyrenia Gate, which is part of an ancient fortress. That uh, sounds pretty interesting, and we will certainly see some uh, interesting things along the way. So I just bought some juice at that market there, fruit mix. It was 30 Turkish lira, that is $1.65. The cool thing is that there are 13 different languages on the box. English is on there, and then, uh... Merhaba. Merhaba. How are you? I'm fine. You speak English? So. A little bit? Huh? You're from Nicosia? Turkish. You're Turkish? Yes. Cypriot or other Turkey? Cyprus. Cypriot Turkish. Yes. Okay, here in Nicosia. Yes. Great. Your name? Arun. Arun. My name is Arun. All right, I'm Gabriel. Nice to meet you, man. Okay. All right. Have a nice day. So, uh, 13 languages all over this box, including like, like South Indian language, I think. Anyway, gonna keep on walking. Nicosia, Turkish municipality, Ataturk Avenue, Turkish language. The flag of Turkey, flag of Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. And so here are the old city walls. I will talk more about this when I get to the Kerenia Gate. So, two fun facts about Cyprus, and including the uh, Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, which is that the plug that they use, the electrical socket, is the same as the British one. In Turkey, the electrical socket that they use is the European one. Also, and this is not the uh, best place to make the point because it's a one-way street, but they drive on the left side of the road. The reason for those two realities is that Cyprus 
when it was unified was a British colony up until 1960. Cyprus and Malta are the only two places in Europe, if you're going to call this Europe, which is debatable. Cyprus and Malta are the only two places in Europe other than the United Kingdom and Ireland where they drive on the left side of the road because it was a British colony. So we're at Camhoriet Square. And here is Kyrenia Gate. And you can see, driving on the left, the Kyrenia Gate. Historically known in Italian as Porta del Provedetore is a gate in the Nicosia Walls in North Nicosia, Northern Cyprus. It was the gate which was used for transport to the northern areas, especially Kyrenia. The gate was built in 1567 by Venetians as a part of the new city walls. It was restored by the Ottomans in 1821 and a lookout was added to the gate for a probable Greek revolt. Now, the gate is used as a tourism information office by the Nicosia Turkish municipality. Tablets from different periods hang on the gate. One of these is in Latin and dates from the Venetian period, featuring the date MDLXII, 1562, when the construction of the gate began. The text in Latin was rediscovered when an inscription of the Quran placed by the Ottomans on it was removed in 1931 by the British. A third inscription was placed by the Ottomans in 1821, who renovated the gate at the time and bears the Tugra of Mahmud II. The text in Arabic script reads, O Muhammad, relay this news to those who have believed the victory comes from Allah and its celebration is imminent. So, right there you see the uh, many different historical influences of Cyprus, the Romans, the Venetians, the Ottomans, Arabic language, Turkish, and of course Greek. Dr. Fazil Kuchuk, 1906-1984, the leader of the freedom and existence struggle of the Turkish Cypriot people. There is the Kerenia Gate. Some very unique statues here. The Walled City Museum. And here's another museum that looks a lot like a hammam, a Turkish bath. And walking this way, going into a little bit uh, nicer area with plenty of shops and stores. Getting closer to the center of the city. Turk Square. Thank you.
So what game was that? Maybe backgammon? I couldn't tell. I didn't want to be really annoying like standing there pointing the camera at them for too long. Plus the guy seemed a little bit uh, irritated at whatever just happened in the game. I'm now walking over to the main mosque in Nicosia. Which has some interesting history to it, as you'll see. More of the old city walls. And a cute area here, there is the mosque. Nice market area. So somebody just said Kalimera, that is good morning in Greek. Okay, I'm not sure what this is yet. Evcaf Administration, Cultural Center, Arts and Crafts, Cafe, admission free. Very nice. Really nice. Great place to have a meal, something to drink, a good conversation, and do a little shopping. I like these shirts. Maybe they're uh, women's or men's, not sure. Good for a hot day though, sleeveless. So this is the Buya Khan, which is actually somewhere that I plan to visit today. And just uh, accidentally found it. One of the most important architectural works of the Turkish period in Cyprus, the Buya Khan, is located in the traditional market center within the city walls of Nicosia. It was built in 1572 shortly after Cyprus's acquisition in 1571. And so there you see the reality of Cyprus changing hands, in some cases back and forth from uh, one country to another. So uh, the history is complicated. So here we have 
the Salamier Mosque under construction but it is not a typical mosque because it was originally a Christian church with the minarets added later a little hard to uh, really experience it with all this scaffolding and everything free entrance but is it actually open doesn't look like it and so it was uh, possibly the largest church in the eastern Mediterranean region from when the Muslim religion first arose, so around like the 7th century AD, until the Ottoman period. And so in that uh, Byzantine era, then the cathedral was built. Islam Museum and then it was later turned into a mosque by the Muslims. And so a little more about the mosque, Salamie Mosque, historically known as Cathedral of Saint Sophia or Hagia Sophia Mosque, is a former Christian cathedral converted into a mosque located in North Nicosia. It has historically been the main mosque of the city. The Salemier Mosque is housed in the largest and oldest surviving Gothic church in Cyprus, possibly constructed on the site of an earlier Byzantine church. In total, the mosque has a capacity to hold 2,500 worshipers. It is the largest surviving historical building in Nicosia. And according to sources, it may have been the largest church built in the Eastern Mediterranean in the millennium between the rise of Islam and the late Ottoman period. It was the coronation church of the kings of Cyprus. Okay, we have wandered into a random back street, but a very interesting uh, place we've come across in the process with what looks like old remnants of the ancient civilization, Roman or Greek or Byzantine or something like that. Man, oh man, various phases of history are represented here. 20th century, rusting away like crazy. What year is that thing? Like. 1906 or something? Merhaba. Merhaba. I don't speak any Turkish. No Turkish. English? No English? No. Your shop? Okay. Teşekkür ederim. No idea what she was saying there. It looks like we're at the backside of the hammam. So this whole area is inside of the old city walls. And so we were here before. Let's wander around a little bit more and then I'm gonna take a seat probably back at the uh, old marketplace area right here. And uh, Get a drink and some breakfast. But let's poke around a little bit more. The cats are taking over. Meow. I'm a 
the Buya Khan there. So there is the whole island of Cyprus. We are up here, there we go, Nicosia. On my previous visit to Cyprus, I went to Paphos and Larnaca. Tomorrow I will cross over the border to Larnaca and catch my flight the next day to Athens. A lot of restaurants back in here. I'm guessing in the evening it is a lot more happening. Oh, I think. This is the border. Ah, forbidden zone. <laughs> okay. I'll be back here tomorrow. I'd kind of forgotten about the fact that there was a border in the middle of the city. <laughs> I guess I sort of thought there would be more of an entrance before you got to it or more indication or whatever rather than just like bumping right into the, the border. It's like, boom, Asia, Europe. I see what looks like some colorful street art. I had read online that there was some really good stuff in Nicosia, so let's see if that's some of the good stuff. Not amazing, but still kind of interesting. I guess it's two women. What is like the message here? I guess it's love. In the back streets here, definitely gets a little bit rougher around the edges. So what era are these remains? Doesn't seem too old. 20th century, 19th century. The Walls Inn Brew Pub, Craft Brewing. I'm pretty sure that I saw that before. Yes, 
That is the Kyrenia Gate. Up there and to the left, I think. Okay, well, I think I have basically uh, shown a lot of what there is to see in Nicosia. So, I'm going to head back to the Buyakan, the uh, old marketplace area there. Take a seat, relax. Get some brunch. Efes is the most popular beer in Turkey. However, this is not Efes. This is Bomanti, another Turkish beer, and one of my favorites, really good. Their red ale is one of my all-time favorites, but it's hard to find. They don't have it here. Oh,